AWS Lambda supports to package and deploy your function as container images. Using tools like the Docker CLI, we can build and push Docker images to the Amazon Elastic Container Registry, also known as Amazon ECR. We can then use these images to be run on AWS Lambda functions. This makes it easy and seamless to run AWS functions as container images. In this video, let's learn about how to get started with Docker container images and running them on AWS Lambda functions. I will show you how to build a Docker image and push them to an Amazon ECR repository and then use a Lambda function from there. I will be using .NET because I am a .NET programmer, but this process would be very much similar for any other language that you would be using. So continue watching even if you are not a .NET developer. Hello everyone. My name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. Without much delay, let's head off straight into Visual Studio where I'll be writing the first .NET function to be hosted on AWS Lambda as a Docker image. So here, I have Visual Studio open. So let's click Create a new project. So here, I have the AWS toolkit already installed because of which I get the option of AWS and choose the templates for that. Now I had walked through the complete setup in my first video on AWS Lambda functions. So make sure to check that out if all of this is new to you. Let's choose the AWS Lambda project and .NET Core C Sharp. Let's click next, which will prompt us to choose a name. So let's specify AWS Docker and Lambda because this is a Docker image running in a Lambda. Let's make sure it's in the appropriate folder. Let's click create. This prompts you to select a blueprint so let's choose an empty function to get started because this is just for demo purposes. You could use any of the other templates, whichever suits your application needs. So let's click finish and this will set up the new project. We have the project all set up. So we have the function.cs, which is the base function class for this AWS Lambda function. This is a simple handler which takes in an input and it simply returns it as an upper text. Let's add a log statement so that we can also see this from the cloud watch. So let's use context.logger.logline message. So this is going to log a new line into the console log. So let's specify string interpolation using dollar and specify converting this particular input. So let's use brackets and say input. Let's make sure to leave in the T and save this. Now this is the base function, so I'll not be adding anything more. Now your Lambda function could have more functionality based on your application needs. Since we need to create a new Docker image, let's go in and add a Docker file to this solution. So right clicking here, let's say add and specify add new item. Let's choose a text file. So let's use specify text and select this. From here, we can specify this is going to be named Docker file. Let's click add. Visual Studio is still going to add the .txt. So let's remove that from this particular file because we don't need any extension for that. Now I have the contents already prepared for this file. So let me copy and paste this and then I'll walk you through them. Here, we start from a base image, which is from Amazon AWS Lambda .NET and .NET Core 3.1. This is the base image that AWS provides to create Docker images. Now this is specific for .NET, but if you navigate to this URL, which will also be there in the description, you can see the AWS base images for Lambda. This supports various different runtimes based on your programming language. Now in my case, I have used the one from .NET, which is being used from the Docker Hub repository. You can also use a similar image from the Amazon ECR public repository. Coming back to our Docker file, we then use the image from Microsoft for .NET SDK 3.1 to build this project. So we first copy the AWS Docker Lambda CS project file, which is this new project that we have just created into a base folder. We first run the .NET restore to restore all the NuGet packages for this particular project. After that, we copy all the source code files into the source folder, which is the same folder as we copied the CS project file. Once all the files are inside the Docker, we can run the .NET build by specifying the additional attributes as required. Once the build is complete, we use it to publish this particular solution. So we run the .NET publish and specify the other attributes that's required. What's important is the use of dash output and specifying the app slash publish folder. 
So this is the folder where all the output of this particular published command will go into. Once that is all done, we can package this into a Lambda image. So using the base image that we initially specified from Amazon, we can create the Docker Lambda image. So we specify the working directory as slash wire slash task, which is a convention that Lambda expects. So all the function code needs to be inside this particular working directory. So we copy all the files that we had published in the last step into the root directory here, which will be the working directory that is slash where slash task. We also set up the starting point for this Docker image right in the Docker file, which can also be overridden when we set up the Lambda, which I will show you in a moment. So here we have the DLL name specified and also the namespace followed by the function name. Function handler is the name of the function inside function.cs which is the starting point for our function. I talk about this format in the initial video on getting started with AWS Lambda. So make sure to watch that if this is all new to you. So once we have this Docker file, we can build this image and push it into an Amazon ECR repository. To do that, let's first go into the Amazon console and create an ECR repository for us. Let's go to aws.amazon.com and sign in to the console. I'm already logged in, so let's go into Elastic Container Registry. Now, since I had recently visited this service, it comes up in my dashboard. You can also search here and say Elastic Container Registry and select it from this list. To create a new repository and get started, let's click the Get Started button. This asks us for the repository name, so let's use Rahul Pinath-YouTube in this particular case. I have left it as private and all the other settings as default. Let's click create repository, which is going to create a new repository for us. We have the repository already created. Now to start pushing Docker images into here, let's select this particular repository and say view push commands. This will show you the commands that's required to push a Docker image into this repository. Now this has a couple of steps. So let's run these from our command line window. Let's open the command line tool and navigate to the same folder that our project is in. So let's specify change directory and paste in the path to our project. Now here we have the Docker file inside of this. So let's clear the screen and start running the commands from the ECR repository. So let's copy this first. This is going to retrieve an authentication token and authenticate our Docker client to update into this ECR registry. So this uses the AWS CLI command and also the Docker CLI commands. Now, if you haven't set up the AWS CLI and the Docker CLI, now is a good time to get this installed. I'll put the relevant links inside this video's description. Make sure to check that out. So let's go back into our CLI and paste this command and run this. Now this first gets to the ECR and gets a login password and then uses that to authenticate with Docker. It shows login succeeded. So let's go to the next step. Navigating back, this step is going to build the Docker image that we have created. So this is using the Docker build and specifies the image name as Rahul Nath YouTube. It also looks for the Docker file in the current folder, which is why we have the dot. So let's navigate back, paste this in the command line and run this. Now this is going to build the Docker file that we have just created. It does all those steps. It first gets the image, then copies the Lambda project and runs .NET restore. After that, it will run the build and then the publish. Looks like the publish command has a wrong project file. So let's navigate back into Visual Studio and make sure to fix that. So here you can see this has a wrong project file, which I was using for testing purposes earlier. So let's copy this again and paste this inside here and save this and navigate back to the command line and run the Docker build again. This time we have all the project names correct. So the Docker build works as expected. Now navigating back to the ECR repository, we can now tag this image using this particular command. It uses docker tag and specifies the tag to be used. So let's copy that, navigate back to the command line. Let's clear this and paste this command again. Now this is running the docker tag on the latest image that we just created. This is successful. So let's navigate back and copy the last command, which is to push this new image inside this repository. So let's use that from our CLI. And this is going to push the newly created image into the Amazon ECR repository that we just created. 
Now you can see this number with the DKR ECR AP is identifying the repository that we just created. This may take some time depending on the Docker image size and also your internet connection speeds. The image is successfully pushed. So let's navigate back to Amazon ECR, close this dialog and refresh this repository. We have the image here that we just pushed, which is using this tag that we had created. To start using this from an AWS Lambda, let's navigate to the AWS Lambda section. So let's search Lambda inside here and select that to create a new Lambda function. Let's click the create function. This allows us to select a container image to deploy for our function. Now here we can specify a function name. So let's say Docker Lambda and select a container image. So let's browse an image and make sure to select the repository that we just created and the latest image from that. So let's click select image and that selects for this Lambda function. Now here we can also specify the container image overrides, which gives in the entry point, the CMD and the working directory. We had already specified the CMD inside our Docker file. So we don't have to do anything inside of here. Now let's leave the rest as default and click create function. We have the Docker Lambda function successfully created so we can navigate to the test to run a test on this particular function. So by default, this has a hello world, which takes in a JSON. But if we navigate back to our function inside function.cs, this simply takes a string input. So let's simply use a name as a string to test this. So let's navigate back and specify a name. Let's say Rahul. And we can save this as a new event so that we can invoke this from our test console. So let's specify name and click save. Now let's click the test button, which will send Rahul to the Docker Lambda function. And it returns back a response from that. So if we expand the details, we can see this particular name that we send is now capitalized, which is exactly what our Docker Lambda function is doing. It takes in a string input and returns a two upper on that particular name. So if we were to send in another name, let's say, hello Rahul, it's going to capitalize all of them as well. As expected, we can see the response here. Now, if we go into the monitor section, we can also go to the CloudWatch events and see the log messages that we had written. Navigating into this log stream, we can see two log messages for the inputs that we had specified. Here we have converting Rahul and also converting hello Rahul. Note in these cases, the Lambda functions ran very quickly. It almost ran in 13.1 milliseconds because of which we did not get any timeout. Now the default timeout for a Lambda function that we create from the UI is around three seconds. So if we navigate back to the function, we can see under the configuration tab, under general configuration and click edit, we can see the timeout in here. You can change this based on the needs of your application. If you're reading from an S3 bucket or running long running processes, you will definitely have to increase this timeout to a larger value. Also, if you need to give permissions to access other resources, you can do that from here as well. You can also use triggers to wire this up to S3 events or Amazon API gateway, etc. I'll cover this in a separate video because that is independent of using Docker container or simply uploading your function. Now, if you want to make an update to the Docker image, so let's say we added more functionality to our function class, we can create the same steps as we followed before. So we can recreate the build and then push up a new repository to that. So let's see in this example. So now instead of simply returning an input to upper, let's also add in the text hello. So let's say dollar specify hello and specify the name. So in this case, we'll use the string interpolation again and specify brackets. So this is going to return hello and the name in caps to the callee. So let's save this. Now I can go back to the console and run the same Docker build commands and then tag and the push. Since I've already logged in, I don't have to run that command again. Like me, if you're using Visual Studio, you can also push an image from Visual Studio directly. To publish from Visual Studio, let's go to the CS project, right click and choose publish to AWS Lambda. This is available as part of the AWS toolkit. So selecting that, it prompts up a dialog which specifies the package type as image. Now, if this is not a Docker image, but using a core .NET runtime, then we would be using zip. This is what I use in the first video on getting started with AWS Lambda. 
So let's leave this as image because we are using a Docker image. We have the function name populated here, which is docker-lambda. This is the one that we have created in my account. These are automatically populated here because I am connected to my same account using this profile in here. You can add a new profile if you want inside the toolkit configuration. Inside the image command, we can give the same command that we used as the CMD inside our Docker file. So this is using the assembly name, the namespace, and then the function name. Let's select the image repository. This is the ECR repository that we created under my account. So let's choose Rahul YouTube and also give an image tag. In this case, let's specify VS to indicate Visual Studio. Let's click next, which prompts up an advanced settings tab. Here, we can specify the roles and also the timeouts and any other information that we need for this Lambda function. Let's leave this as default and click upload. This automatically starts packaging the Docker file. So it uses the Docker build to build the Docker image and then it specifies a tag and builds it and uploads it inside the ECR repository. Once that is successful, it uses the newly published container image to use it from our AWS Lambda function. Now this is automatically doing all of that step for us. So we don't have to do this manually. Now in a real world project, I would be setting up a build deploy pipeline to do this for me rather than using publish or manually publishing it from the command line. But that will be a topic for another video in itself. Now all these is successful and we have the Docker function opened up inside Visual Studio itself. So let's specify a request. So let's say double quotes Rahul and click invoke. Now this is going to invoke the Lambda function just like we invoked from the test console. You can see the response here now has hello Rahul. We can also see the log messages from CloudWatch in the log output. So here you can see converting Rahul, which is the log message that we had written. If we navigate back into the AWS console and let's go under the image tab, we can now see this is using the image, which is of tag dash VS. This is the one that we have just pushed from Visual Studio. If we navigate to our AWS ECR repository, so let's select ECR and say Elastic Container Registry. And if we navigate to that in a separate tab and to the repository, we can now see two images. This image we pushed from the command line tool and this is the one that we just pushed from Visual Studio. You can also run the test from within this Docker Lambda. So let's go to Lambda, choose our saved event and specify test. Now in the details, we can see this is returning the response as expected. Now we have successfully pushed up a Docker image from a CLI and also from Visual Studio. Based on the IDE that you're using, you might have options to push this from there as well. I hope this helps you to get started with Docker images inside an AWS Lambda function. We saw how to create a Docker image and push that to an ECR repository and create a Lambda function from there. Using Docker images is particularly useful if you have to run custom tool or even use the latest runtimes like .NET 5, which is not yet supported out of the box from AWS. So anytime a new version of your language comes out and you want to use that within Lambda, Docker might be the best answer. Make sure to try this out and let me know in the comments how things go. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon.